where you're at, boys. Keep them covered. They try to drop their hands, let them have it. Come on, check down that express box. Sorry, I can't oblige, but a number with a scattered gun has already relieved us of the box just a little piece back. Come on, I got no time to He's telling you the truth. Somebody beat you to it. It's a lone robber, just beyond the bend of the road. By the old century oak tree. He's probably heading south. Go get him. There he goes. Maybe I'd better help you into town, miss. Thanks. 
I'd be so grateful. Hang on to those reins until I tie up my horn. Oh, but I've got to see what's happened to my granddad. Your granddad? Where is he? In the wagon. He took one of his spells just out of Jimtown. That's why I had to do the driving. Wait a minute. I'll take a look at it. We'd better not disturb him until we reach Gold Gap. He seems to be resting right peacefully. That's fine. But uh, where does he get this Rogue of the Range stuff? Search me, lads. All I know is he said to tell the express company to charge their loss to the Rogue of the Range. Ain't you got any more idea than that who he is? Couldn't say nothing but the barrel of his scatter gun coming from behind that sanctuary oak. But I'll stake my life that he ain't one of the robbers we met up with before. Yeah, how do you know? Some more of the same, Charlie. Well, first off, Lige, he's got a different way of working. Platter and thunder. Well, he don't seem anxious to shoot either. But the other gang, where they're a bunch of cutthroats, would rather plug you than eat. Well, being polite don't help me any. My bank had $10,000 in that box. What Gold Gap needs is a vigilance committee. Three holdups inside of a month. Appears to me, Lars, like the express company ought to be doing the beefing. We got to make good every cent your bank is out. It isn't a question of who finally loses the money. What I object to is the kind of justice we get. The only time the courts get virtuous is when a fellow like Jim Mitchell goes off on a spree and wings an Indian, all in the spirit of fun. And they give him five years for that sort of thing. I believe if the truth was known, Mitchell was mixed up in a lot more lawlessness around here. Yeah. Only nobody's ever got around to proving it on him. John's right, boys. That Mitchell's been mixed up in a lot of things that we don't know nothing about. You hold the rein. I'll go get the doctor. I'm in a jam, Doc. And I want you to help me out. I'm kind of passing the buck to you, and I want you to break it to her as easily as you possibly can. In the wagon. Doc will take care of everything now, miss. Oh, thank you. I didn't have the nerve to tell her that he's already dead. If I can be of any more use, just send word to me. All right. And thanks awfully, Mr. Duran, for saving our lives. Uh, here comes Stella. She's going to sing a song for us. Not a care, not a frown in the crowd to be found as all the night long in music and song. We dance, we dance beyond our way. All together, boys. Here to a merry maker, a jolly good bunch are we. Set it up, boys, increase our joy, and let us all be free. Loud and long we'll sing our song.
soon can you pick my horse up with a new shoe? Oh, inside an hour, I guess. All right, fly to it. I suppose you've heard of the stage holdup, Dan? Yeah, I met the sheriff on his way out to look things over. Oh. Hello, Estelle. Oh, hello, Dan. Want to do me a favor? Sure, I'd be glad to. Then go over to Doc's place. There's a gospel wagon girl there. Her granddad died a few hours ago, and you might be able to mother her some. Gee, that's tough, Dan. I, I don't know just what I could do, but... Yeah, sure, I'll go. Just as soon as I can get my wrap. Hello, Lamb. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Found any trace of the robbers? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe so. Say, Lamb, did you ever happen to make a horseshoe that would match that one? Where'd you find it? Out at the scene of the robbery. Got any ideas? Well, maybe so. Hello, Doc. How was the girl? Did she take it awfully hard? Went to pieces pretty much. So I gave her sleeping powder. Had to do something to quiet her nerves. Poor kid. I wonder what she'll do now. That's a tough part of it. As far as I can learn, she ain't got any kin folks left. No money either. Looks like she's stranded for fair. Gold Gap is a tough place for a girl like her to be stranded in. Some girls can take care of themselves. But she's the kind that needs to be taken care of. Sort of uh, delicate and, well, like, like an expensive piece of china. Ever see this before, Duran? I can't say that I have. Why? Well, sir, it's an exact fit for your horse. Left hind foot. The one you're having shod right now. It could be the one he threw. Where'd you find it? About ten foot back of where you stood when you held up the stage. Quit your kidding, Sheriff. I must have ridden through there when I was chasing that runaway gospel wagon. Sure, that's it. The old parson and his granddaughter, Ted. No good, Stell. I studied the tracks, Duran. Some of them led off towards the road, but never reached it. At that time, your horse was wearing all four shoes. The barefoot tracks all led off in another direction. Right down towards the canyon bottom. Better cool your heels and lock up. Give you more time to figure up a better alibi. Give me them guns. You can't do that, Tom. You can't arrest a man on account of a horseshoe. Why, there might be a hundred horses it would fit. I guess I'll let my foot slip still. Tom has got me dead to right. Where'd you hide that money, Dan? I suppose you would like to know that. Yeah. Me and the express company, too. If I come clean, will the law go easy on me? Well, you know how Judge Simmons is. But I'll use my influence. Let's go. Right here, not more than a hundred yards from the natural bridge, inside of an old hollow tree. You can't miss it. Here you are, Tom. That's all there's to it. Now, you'd accommodate me a heap if you'd bring Stella Lamb here. Just a matter of a little business I wanted to handle for him. All right, just as soon as I get you booked. Legal. Now, don't trouble yourself, Tom. I'll send her over. Thanks, Lige. Well, come on, Dan. Get into your lockup. I sure hate doing this.
And you'll find my horse tied behind the livery stable. Get going. I'd have never thought of him, Dan. I thought there was something fishy about him when he hit town two months ago. Anyhow, it's going to save Tom's face. The first sure enough arrest he's made in more than a year. Yes, if you don't count Hook and Jim Mitchell for winging Injun Joe. Say, Charlie, Stella gone home yet? Nope, she's in a dress. There she is now. Oh, uh, Stella. Hello, Lodge. Uh, Dan Duran over at the jail wants Ooh. to uh, have a little talk with you. Thanks. few words with her in private, Tom? Well, it won't be too long, Dan. This sheriff in business sure raises heck with a fellow's supper hour. Oh, Dan, why did you do it? What are they going to do to you? Send me away on a little vacation, I guess. You shouldn't have admitted it, Dan. They couldn't have proven anything. Now, you sit down here and give me a chance. There are several things I want you to do for me. All right, Dan. You know what it is? No. It's a bill of sale to my claim, made out in your favor. Gee, Dan, that, that's swell of you. Only I, I couldn't accept it. Let me finish, Del. I want you to pass that claim along to the gospel wagon girl. But don't let her know where it came from. What's the big idea, Dan? Are you falling for Tess? You know better than that, Steph. A girl like her is way out of my class. This ought to be enough to set her up in some self-supporting business, providing we can get her to accept it. That's why I thought you might kind of adopt her. That's not my idea of being a mother. Now, now be reasonable, Steph. I didn't mean to adopt her legally. Just go into business. You're putting up all the money. Maybe my cabin will make over into a polite eating joint. But nothing stronger than coffee going over the counter. Come on, Stell. Right way. I gotta get out and pick up them gold bags before my supper gets cold. That's the time we slipped something over on them, boys. We sure did. Slick work on your part, Stone. Oh, it is a hollow tree, all right. There wasn't another in a hundred yards of it. You wouldn't double-cross me, would you, Dan? Of course not. You know I'm not plumb foolish. Well, how do you figure it, then? Well, you'll have to do some of the figuring yourself. Maybe the gang that chased me stumbled onto it. Or one of the men that saw me draw the map. Mitchell? Yeah. What's it to you? Same judge that gave you five years gave me 20. Old Simmons? Yeah. I loaded it on after I came clean. Hey, you two, cut out the chatter.
I drifted into Gold Gap about a month after they sent you up. Color buttons, socks, and I... No, thanks, not today. Uh, will you please tell me, is there a nice place to eat around here? Well, there's the Gold Nugget Cafe right there. The Gold Nugget? Gold Nugget Cafe. Oh, Gold Nugget. Right there. Much obliged. <laughs> you seen Judy lately, Bob? No, me and her had a fight. Oh. Hi, Stella. Hello, Artie. Hello, Bob. Howdy, Art. What can I do for you this morning? About an order of ham and eggs. Oh, now, I think I can pick you up. How are things over at the Bar X, Art? Nothing much new. Just plugging along. Break that hen fruit right on top of that hog, Stella. Right. Country style. Good morning. Good morning. Give me some of that. Are you sure? Positive. Obliged. Yes, I will. Hey, y'all. He's here. Oh, do I look respectable? It shows right through to my petticoat. Gee, Tess, you look beautiful. Just like, like a piece of delicate china. Now you watch your step, kid. If Lars Branscombe's listening to wedding bells, you're in clover. But if he starts any other kind of play, you just come to me and I'll... Well, I'll take care of him. I will, Stella. Hey, Jim. Guard, Pinky, the one that slipped me that deck of cards. Yeah, sure. What about them? Not so loud. I got him thinking that I still know where that ten thousand dollar express money is. What are you joshing a guard for? Don't be so dumb, Jim. Guards here don't even earn good cowhand pay, and they'll do a lot for a piece of ten thousand dollars. You mean? A getaway? Now you're getting smart. But do you think he'll go for it? Everything is all set. Peaky goes on duty next Wednesday night. He comes in here, he slips us a gun. We make it for the north gate. He has the guard there fixed, too. There are horses waiting on the other side of Tarweed Hill.
All right, Danny. It's all fixed. Beat it. What happened? Where'd they go? on top of me before I knew it. They went that way. There's a change of clothes in these packs, but we won't take time to put them on now. There's the layout, Dan. Come on, I'm starving. We'll be shoveling grub inside of ten minutes. Anybody that could engineer and escape as slick as you did ought to fit in right handy. Up to now, I've always played a lone hand. You'll find we're not bad company. And we can use you all right, providing you're willing to take the same split as the rest of the boys. Have some more beans. Much obliged. Sounds fair enough. An even break all around. Yep, that's it. Share and share alike. Of everything that's left over. What do you mean, everything that's left over? Well, half of what we take goes somewhere else. Now, the boys have all agreed whoever gets it ain't none of their business. What does this other fellow do to earn it? Plenty. Whenever we bust open an express box, it's always loaded. We don't waste no time stopping stages that are traveling light. Oh, I see. Inside information, huh? Not a bad center. Not half bad. Well, what do you say? It's a deal. Come on, Charlie, fill them up again. We're nice and Hey, fellas. The stage just unloaded the newspapers down in front of the post office. Yeah, what does it say, John? I haven't read a newspaper in ages. Escape convicts still at large. Bloodhounds lose trail. Although sheriff's posses of five counties have been searching no trace of Dan Doran and Jim Mitchell, the two convicts who escaped from the penitentiary three nights ago has been found. A reward of $1,000 is offered for information leading to their arrest. Like that That's easy money if we can get it. It's a lot of money for one man. Boy, you can tell the world I'm going to take a chance on that. Dad! 
We've got to find a safer place so I can talk to you. All right. Come on. What are we stopping here for? Oh, I just thought we might do a little stargaze. Right pretty, aren't they? Yes, they are. My granddaddy always called them the eyes of the angels looking. Uh, what was that you were saying about the uh, eyes of the angels? That they're looking down. Please, uh, don't you think the air's a little chilly? Maybe we'd better go back and make some hot coffee. It'll be cozier there. Yeah, sure. Anything you say. No one can hear us in here. Oh, Dan, what did you do it for? Why did you come here? They're sure to catch you and... Is it Tess, Dan? Is that why you took the chance? It wouldn't do to get her mixed up in this. Why, she's... Yeah, I know. She's cut out of a finer piece of cloth than the rest of us. That's what you mean, isn't it? Yes. I guess that about sums it all up. All right, Dan. What is it? What do you want me to do? I want you to get the sheriff and bring him here. Oh, no. Now, Dan, please. What are you going to do? Now, don't get worried. It looks like I'm going to have to let you in on a little secret. Man. Well, well, Dan, what about the robbery? Why did they send you to prison then? So I could escape. Well, well, what good would that do? A lot. You see, when they arrested Jim Mitchell, it wasn't because they were so aggravated about him shooting Indian Joe. No? You see, they had every reason to believe that he knew a lot about the stagecoach robbers for the last three or four years, but they couldn't prove it on him. So they figured they'd arrest him for the shooting and try and scare him into talking but he wouldn't scare. Well, is that why they sent him to prison? Did they think that would scare him? No. They sent him to prison so he could escape. The idea was for us to escape together. And it worked out just as we had planned. He led me to some men I've been trying to get a line on for a long time. Oh, gee, Dan, I ought to have guessed it. I should have known. No one was supposed to know, Stella. Now, listen. The reason I'm asking you to help me is because I... I don't know of anybody else I can trust. All right, Dan. I'll go and get Tom for you. You wait here. Wait out here a minute and I'll make some coffee. Just as soon as I take off my wrap. Yeah. Sure. See why? Looks right cozy. Don't, please don't. Oh, it's all right. Nothing to get scared about. I guess I guess I got over anxious all of a sudden. For weeks now I've been trying to muster up my courage to pop the question. When I had it on my tongue just now, I didn't want to go and swallow it again. 
Well, what's the answer? Well, I, I don't think I know what you mean. I'm asking you if you're willing to be my wife. Why, well, I... You get right out of here, Lodge Branscombe. And if I ever... Now, don't you go jumping at conclusions, Phil. I wanted to be private when I asked her to be my wife. That's right. He did ask me to marry him. And I suppose it was the same line of reasoning that brought you in here with Tom, huh, Stell? Come on, Stell. Am I right or am I wrong? You're covered, folks, so don't move. So that's the kind of friend you are, Stella. Making me think I can trust you and then bringing the sheriff. All right, Tom. If you think you can catch me, you've got to do a lot of tall riding. I just wanted you to know, Tom, that somebody tipped the gang off that a lot of money is being expressed in here uh, for payrolls tomorrow. And I'm expected to help them hold up the stage. Fine. Go right ahead. Me and my posse will be ready and waiting to round up the bunch. But that way, we'll never find out who the man higher up is. Suspicion anybody? Maybe. It's someone that knows when money is being shipped to the bank. Well, uh, Lige Branscombe is the only one that I can think of. Let it know. That's right. Well, what could be his idea? Getting money stolen that belonged to his own bank. A right slick idea. You see, he gets his bit of it back. And the express company has to come across with the full amount. What was all the shooting about? Well, the sheriff found Duran in, in the cafe, but he got away from him. Hmm. Sure had his nerve come back here. Yeah. Well, Tom, what do you think of my plan? Well, it might work. Anyway, I can't think of a better one. Yep, we'll try it out. You better get going, Dan. Listen, Tom. Tess is liable to get a notion to marry Branscombe, and we've got to figure out some way to stop her. Now, if I find out anything, I'll leave you a message in that hollow tree. You do the same. Old jingles doggone funny to me. I'm gonna take a look. Iron washers. What? 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 About six bits worth. Open up the mouth of the bag. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. We've been tricked. <laughs> come on, everybody. I'm doing the buying. Thank you. 
Come, come on, drink to the bride, the prettiest little filly in the gold country. How come you're driving yeah. to Jimtown to get hitched? Oh, got to humor the wife. <laughs> she wants a sure enough sky pilot to do the splicing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom! Tom! I don't want to hold up! Who done it? Five, six bandits, maybe seven. Where did it happen? Why, three or four miles back, maybe five. You'll find it. They chopped a tree down across the road. Well, I'll ride out and look it over. Oh, it looks like I'm going to eat a cold supper again tonight. Yeah, well, looking it over ain't enough. I had $6,000 in that box. Keep your shirt on, Lige. They didn't get any of your money. Why, all the gold is in the express office now. We chucked them a trick box full of washers. Say, who tipped you off the stage was going to be held up? Nobody. But Tom said they were likely to be, and we got prepared. What's the good one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the good one. The shirt's a joke on them. You get my message? Yep. And I think I've got a plan. It's going to take a lot of fast thinking and acting, but... Suppose we sit down and figure out how it'll work out. might work, but we're liable to find ourselves in jail instead of lives. No one will suspect that you had anything to do with it. I'm willing to take my chances. All right, Dan. But I got a plumb uneasy feeling that we're getting our noses ready for a bump. We'd better get moving. There's not much time to lose between now and tomorrow morning. Mountain lion again. Guess I'll go and see if I can't spot him. It cleared up a lot of things that were puzzling me. I always thought it was funny he confessed so easy and let him send him off to prison. And it was fishy, too, his being in that closet when Stella shoved in with Tom. You've got to eliminate him, complete and permanent. <laughs> but that was only the beginning. They drove a spike clean through an umbre's head. It started between his eyes and come out at the base of his skull. Then they fed him to the buzzard. 
but even the buzzards didn't like a spy. <laughs> Say, I know a Chinaman once. He says in his country they boil the spies in oil. They let him down slow, feet first to his waist, and he screams his lungs out. <laughs> Well, listen to this one. When it comes to eliminating spies, the Moros down in the Philippines has them all beat. First, <laughs> they strip off all his clothes and prop his mouth open with a stick. Then they spread eagle the ombre over a giant ant's nest, face looking straight up in the sun. Then they bait him with molasses just to make sure them ants go to work pronto. <laughs> I know a better one than that. It's a tribe of Indians down in Arizona. And they'd catch a spy, why, they'd stick a stick up like that. Ain't a chance in the world to find them. It's too dark. What are you going to do then? Ride back to the shack, pack up and bear moose before he has a posse after it. Take him up, you hombres. Get ready to ride, boys. Got to reach the gym town lockup before morning. Are you coming along too, Stell? I ask you to. It'll be like having home folks at my wedding. You don't mind, do you? No, it's all right. Climb in. Besides, there hasn't been time enough to get our wedding clothes ready. This way I can keep working up to the last minute. Hold the horses. I'll go back and get it.
Duran? Oh, impossible. Joan must have plugged him before now. What's the meaning of all this? It means that I'm going to rig up a wedding for you, but not with Lige Branscombe. Seems like a practical joke, doesn't it? With a real laugh on me. Stone. Hey, Stone. Where is everybody? No, you don't. I need that note. Thank you, Stella. Oh, forget it, Ted. Look, you better go in and spruce up a bit while I put the kettle on. Say, you better put on some of my rouge. I imagine you'll be having company pretty soon. Well, you certainly pulled it off great, Stella. I'm glad you approve. And Ted, how is she taking it? Ready to welcome you with open arms. She'll be in in a minute. Well, it, it looks like my work here is pretty well cleaned up. It means I'll have to go elsewhere. You and Tess have been making a pretty good go of it, haven't you? Yeah. I was just uh, wondering if, if you'd mind sort of uh, splitting up the partnership. No. I've been suspecting it for a long time. 
You... You suspected it? Mm-hmm. Well, who, who do you think ought to break it to her? You or me? Dan Doran, this is too much. I set her up in business here because you asked me to. I dragged you up to her when everyone else was running you down. I kept her from marrying Lars Branscombe. But when it comes to your proposing, well, you'll have to do that yourself. Propose? Me propose to Ted? Why, gosh, Tell, I have been fishing for words so I could propose to you. Oh. Oh, Dan. Gee, I... 